As you know, a lot of working class voters uh, went in there on, in November and pulled the lever for President Trump, having heard him say that he was going to keep their Medicaid, save their Medicaid uh, without any cuts. CBO says this is an $800 billion, $880 billion cut. Uh, and I asked you at the top, and, and I'm wondering if you could just directly answer this, because one of, the, one of the frustrations people had with how Obamacare was sold to the public is that politicians weren't straight. They didn't acknowledge that there were winners and losers. There were winners and losers with Obamacare. There are winners and losers with Trump Care as well. $880 billion, that's a cut from Medicaid. How is that not a broken promise? Well, look again, Jake, uh, the, the, the winners under Obamacare were the federal government and insurance companies. The winners under the program that we provide and that we, we believe is the most appropriate will be patients and families and doctors. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the reduction in spending that the Congressional Budget Office cites is, again, off the current law baseline. That means if we did nothing at all, if we just continued this broken program uh, for the next 10 years, how much money would the federal government spend? I would suggest to you that the American people are sick and tired of business as usual in Washington, and they're sick and tired of their tax dollars going to programs that actually don't work. We want a Medicaid system that works for those patients. We want a Medicaid system that doesn't just provide them a card and says they have coverage, but doesn't provide them the kind of care that they need. That's the distinction that I would ask them to draw. President Trump, in the Rose Garden ceremony for the House passing the bill, said that premiums are going to go down, deductibles are going to go down. You stand by that? A absolutely. And it will so because you increase competition, you increase choices into the system, you allow young people who are now saying to the program, look, I don't need all that. You allow them to have the opportunity to purchase the kind of coverage that they want for themselves and for their families, not that the government forces them to buy. That's a huge, huge benefit to, the again, the individual patients. It may not help the government, it may not help insurance companies, but it's a huge benefit to patients. And if you're an individual patient out there that you've got pre-existing conditions, the president and, and the Department of Health and Human Services are absolutely committed to making certain that you are able to have coverage that you want and allows you to have coverage that will care for you in a way that makes it so that you can select the doctor that you want to care for you and the place where you want to be treated.